In this video, we're tracking a developing severe weather situation in Arkansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee. The Storm Prediction Center has put out an enhanced risk for severe weather, including a 10% chance of significant tornadoes and a 30% chance of significant damaging winds. Also, we're going to talk about how these same storms are going to affect the East Coast, and it looks like it could get very interesting. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Guys, we're almost at 50,000 subscribers here on this channel. Honestly, never thought I would say that. I just started doing this a couple months ago, but according to YouTube, 70% of the people that are watching this video right now are not subscribed. So I think that if you subscribe, yes, you, we could potentially hit 50,000 subscribers today. Help me out here, guys. Come on. Smash that like button, subscribe, turn notifications on so you never miss a video, and let's start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at our current storm system. And just like I was saying yesterday, we've got a big area of convection and strong to severe thunderstorms all the way through Tennessee here, and now they're working into southeastern Kentucky. Now, by the time this video goes up, these storms will be well off to the west, but right now uh, we do have a severe thunderstorm warnings in southeastern Kentucky and just to the south of Nashville, and I suspect there will be a new severe thunderstorm watch put out here pretty soon as well. Now, guys, I know looking at the radar right now, these storms look pretty nasty. They look mean, but it's important to understand that this is not the main event today, okay? There's more storms forming, and I believe the biggest threat's going to happen tonight, and we can take a closer look at that on the weather models. All right, we're going to start off by looking at the old trusty her model or the high resolution rapid refresh model this is what the radar could look like as we go later on into the day as always if you want to track the time and date with me it's always up here sometimes i forget to call out what time it is and as you can see here around one o'clock p.m today we're still going to have uh, some big thunderstorms going through the nashville area now working its way into the pigeon forge gatlinburg area maybe even as far east as bristol tennessee and once again these are going to be strong storms straight line damaging winds and some large hail is going to be a problem here and additionally as as these storms track to the east over the same areas over and over again, I'm starting to be pretty concerned about flash flooding, okay? Especially on the eastern side of Tennessee and maybe even southeastern Kentucky down here uh, because we got a lot of mountains and we've got a lot of valleys, okay? Whenever we get a significant amount of rain, um, all that rain comes down the mountains into the valleys, and uh, this area is just super prone to flash flooding, especially in a situation like this. So if you're in Eastern Tennessee, Eastern Kentucky over here, go ahead and take your precautions to prepare for a flash flood. I know a lot of us live in low-lying areas near creeks and streams. Today's one of those days where you gotta keep your eye on the creek and get ready to evacuate because some of them are gonna rise fast. But once again, guys, this area of convection, this little warm front convective system of storms is not the main event today. Let me put this further into motion and watch down there in southeastern Arkansas and now western Tennessee. You see how we're starting to get some more storms popping up around 4 o'clock today, okay? What this model is showing is some supercells, okay? There's uh, individual cells of storms popping up all by themselves, and if that's what's going to happen today, then we're going to be talking about a significant tornado threat. If these storms can pop up by themselves and, and take up all the convective energy for themselves and root and become surface-based and, and interact with that lower level jet stream, then we're going to be talking about uh, potentially uh, a couple strong tornadoes today in the southeastern Arkansas area, in the eastern Arkansas area, in the southwestern Tennessee area, and the extreme northwestern areas of Mississippi, okay? This is not going to be a widespread tornado outbreak like we saw the other day, but there's a lot of people that live right here, and all it takes is for one tornado to come down your street and hit your house for this to be a high risk event for you. So uh, we got to take every single one of these storms seriously today. And watch this, as I put this further into motion, you can see those storms are still looking pretty big all the way into nine o'clock tonight. And once again, guys, these are going over the same areas over and over again. Even if you don't get a tornado today, anywhere from Memphis to Nashville to Cookville uh, to Knoxville and Bristol, Tennessee needs to be on high alert for flash flooding today because uh, there's some places here that could easily pick up four inches of rain or more uh, if you if you get two or three storms that train over you uh, within a short period of time. But look at here, 9 o'clock tonight, the HRRR is still showing maybe some discrete supercells here near Nashville and south and west of Memphis down here, all the way down into the Texarkana area. So once again, this is going to be nighttime severe weather threats um, and possibly a nighttime tornado threat. So we need to be on high alert. Make sure you got your alerts turned on on your phone. Uh, your phone will scream at you if you get a tornado warning as long as you got that turned on. And hopefully you have a NOAA weather radar radio. If you don't have one, I've got a link in the description. Even if it's not just for this event, there will always be another severe weather event. And I promise you, you're going to love it when you get it.
All right, let's keep throwing this forward, and it looks like these storms are getting meaner as we go later on into the night, 11 p.m. We're still talking about uh, big-time thunderstorms, uh, but everything's starting to work a little bit to the east now. And whenever this finally forms into a convective linear system of storms, a line of storms rather than a cluster of supercell thunderstorms, then our threat's going to shift from a tornado threat to a straight-line damaging wind threat, okay? Um, this is going to be a strong line of storms, and it's going to move fast to the east. And we've got to watch it closely because uh, these squall lines can cause significant wind damage. Look at this, 2 a.m. tonight, we've got a mean looking area of, once again, a squall line of strong to severe thunderstorms moving through northern Mississippi, central Tennessee, and it's racing towards the east. Let's watch that as it goes all the way into Cookville now. Now it's moving into the northern Alabama area near Huntsville, and now it's moving into the eastern Tennessee area. We've got some strong storms making all the way down to Jackson, Mississippi on the southern side here. But once again, the further into the morning that we go, the weaker these storms storms are going to get. I think the strongest area will probably be here uh, in eastern Tennessee as far as the winds go, but these will kind of die out as we go into the early morning hours on Sunday, 8 a.m., 9 a.m. You can see it's really falling apart there once it gets into northern Georgia, northwestern South Carolina, and North Carolina, but do not let your guard down because I do believe a secondary wave is going to spark up here tomorrow on Sunday and cause another significant severe weather threat here in the east coast, okay? So we're going to talk more about that here in a second, but that's what our storms looking like right now. Now here's our lower level jet stream. We talked about this yesterday and it does show that it's going to crank up here around 9 or 10 o'clock tonight uh, in some areas near 30, 40, 50 knots. Okay. Now this is good. This is actually less than what it was showing yesterday. This is going to be peak time for tornado activity and our jet stream is actually a little bit more calm than what we were showing yesterday. Now, don't get me wrong, this does crank up and it starts going over 60, 70 knots, but this is at 3 a.m. once we're talking about these storms being in a linear mode. Now, when the storms become a linear mode, there can still be tornadoes, but we're not gonna be talking about as many long track violent tornadoes in a situation like that. So this delayed ramp up of the jet stream here is probably the reason why the Storm Prediction Center didn't put out a moderate risk today. It's just an enhanced risk, but it still should be taken seriously. Now, something that has actually up is our CAPE, okay? Our convective available potential energy. Once again, if you're new here, this is the fuel needed for storms to form is actually much higher. We're looking at near Memphis, a convective energy near 4,000 joules per kilogram, which is absolutely off the charts for this time of the year in the Southeast. So we're definitely gonna see some big storms form down here, uh, right around where Tennessee, Mississippi, and Arkansas meet. That area right there is gonna be the target area to see some big storms. If I was storm chasing today, if my storm seeker was completely ready, it's getting there but it's not 100 percent there yet um, i would actually probably go to memphis and then wait for initiation and chase from there then you can see those storms eat up that energy really quick and it dissipates as it moves off to the east here's our significant tornado parameter our maximum time for significant tornadoes according to this model um, is going to be 8 to 10 p.m and we're at 17 out of 10 somewhere down here in south central tennessee now the biggest storms are going to be over here a little bit so you can have significant tornado parameters off the charts uh, but if you don't have storms to interact with that, it doesn't mean anything, okay? So it's a good sign that our big values are over here a little bit further east than what the convection's gonna be, okay? But don't let your guard down. South of Nashville here, there's a good chance today that we get some rotating thunderstorms or even right in the Nashville area, okay? Be weather aware, have those plans in place. All right, now we're taking a look at the NAM three kilometer model for tomorrow. And once again, we're gonna see these storms make it all the way into Virginia. And around 2 p.m. during the heating of the day, these storms are gonna ramp back up, okay? So they died out a little bit back here, uh, but they are going to try to ramp back up in Virginia, Maryland, North Carolina, and South Carolina. And right around here at 5 p.m. is when the NAM model shows a, a large area of strong to severe thunderstorms going through Delaware, the Delmarva Peninsula, Southern Maryland, uh, Central Virginia. You can see a big line of storms here forming up. And the Storm Prediction Center does have a slight risk of severe weather for over here with a hatched area for significant wind, okay? So like I said yesterday, I don't think the tornado threat's gonna be off the charts over here. It's gonna be there, uh, but the main threat here is gonna be straight line damaging winds as we get a squall line of storms coming through and look at that it gets pretty strong there around 7 p.m okay now we do have some uh, individual sails down here and some strong storms with a broken line going all the way down to Georgia and these could be strong to severe at times as well uh, but I think the biggest wind threat is going to be up here uh, in northern Virginia southern Maryland and uh, southern Delaware there okay but don't let your guard down in southern 
Virginia, don't let your guard down in North Carolina, South Carolina, all these storms, anywhere. If your county or if your town gets crossed over by this line of storms, you got to be weather aware tomorrow because um, this is a huge cold pool of air behind here and it's raking up a bunch of warm, moist air out in front of it. And crazy things can happen when that happens, okay? <laughs> okay, so let's keep putting this into motion and the storms kind of die out once again, once we get into the midnight time, um, once these storms reach like Myrtle Beach and Wilmington and, and the coastal areas of North Carolina. Carolina and South Carolina there and then we're gonna be done with storms at 3 a.m. on Monday okay we're done with storms but now we've got snow showers back here uh, in upstate New York look at this this is actually gonna be a pretty cold blast that's coming in thanks to this cold front there's a ton of polar air behind it and that's gonna come through and cool us all off quite a bit here as you can see we've got temperatures in the 20s and 30s behind this but don't worry we're gonna warm back up pretty quickly you can see the 60s and 50s returning this way they'll be here before you know it all right let's take a look at the euro model and take a look at that medium range forecast briefly here's our big storm that we're looking at right now once again that's going to get out of here early in the morning on monday okay it's going to bring a little bit of snow to maine new hampshire and vermont uh, and once again there's that cold air that's coming down from canada there but let's see what happens after that once again big old ridge comes through okay you see this big wave right here that means it's going to be beautiful glorious warm weather here for much of the south midwest southeast and even up into the mid-atlantic region there um, enjoy it okay i believe that april and may are also going to be very active so anytime we get uh, these nice breaks of good weather we need to go outside and we need to enjoy it okay so uh, monday looks great for most of us but look over here uh, up in manitoba we've got a big storm forming a 977 millibar low pressure system with a blizzard behind it up here in canada and we also have uh, disturbance moving through uh, colorado and wyoming uh, and of course that's going to ruin our nice day over here as we go later on into the week next week check it out another huge arctic blast is coming down on tuesday um, and this is actually some really cold air that's coming down and it's going to interact with some warm Gulf air down here in the deep south and we could be talking about another severe weather event okay it's too early to talk about the specifics right now but just know Wednesday or Thursday of next week we could be talking about some more severe weather here in Dixie Alley uh, all the way up through the Appalachian region maybe even into the mid-Atlantic region once again uh, but the big story here is going to be this giant area of cold air a polar air mass that's moving into the area right in the beginning of April and watch what happens here this this big area of just chilly air is going to interact with this warm air and cause another low pressure system to form and we could be talking about an all-out snowstorm that's right an all-out april snowstorm over here on april 1st thursday uh, for much of the mid-atlantic region the appalachian mountains here through eastern kentucky west virginia much of pennsylvania upstate new york and vermont watch this it's basically it's a nor'easter uh, a strong nor'easter moving through bringing some heavy snow to vermont and uh, quebec there and that's going to move all the way up into New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. It's going to be a blizzard, okay? We're going to, we're going to be talking about a blizzard up here. Uh, but behind it, just look at this giant wave, this giant area of cold air uh, just stagnant over the Great Lakes region. It's going to be cold, okay? So an Arctic blast. It is an Arctic blast. Uh, you'll hear a lot of people talking about that. But it's nothing to be concerned about because Arctic blasts in April just mean that we're going to be significantly below average. It's not going to be deathly cold. It's not going to be in the negatives. Some people are kind of over hyping this <laughs> But, you know, it's still unfortunate. A lot of people are seeing, you know, blooming, trees are budding, flowers are coming up. Uh, there, there's definitely going to be a freeze, a brief freeze that happens here in the East Coast around the 1st of April. And then that gets out of here and we get another big ridge moving in. Look at that. And we might have multiple days of good weather before our next uh, big system moves in. But once again, once we get over 200 hours out, the forecast gets kind of wonky. So just stay tuned. We'll keep looking at that for you. All right. That's all the weather talk I have for you today. Once again, if you're in Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas, even uh, Southeast Eastern Kentucky, uh, Western Virginia, Western North Carolina, Northern Georgia, Northern Alabama, Arkansas. You know, if you're in the South down here, make sure you're weather aware today, especially if you're in a flood prone area. A lot of times flash flooding is overlooked uh, whenever tornadoes are in the headline, but it, flash flooding can be just as dangerous. So be weather aware, subscribe please, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.